Up next, we have an exciting talk from two of the core team members from the Pagoda side. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. We're going to be talking about integrating NEAR's open web services. So we have coming from Boulder and Seattle, we have Jim and Chetna from Pagoda. A few fun facts about them. Jim shares his apartment with six mountain bikes. He's an avid mountain biker. And then Chetna, she skydived on her milestone birthday. So please welcome Jim and Chetna. These are the clickers. Let's see if that works. Oh, you have to connect. Yeah, this one, it's a different thing than the end, but I'll just, I'll just click through manually. Yeah, I'll click through manually. Okay, hey everyone, uh, how are you all doing? Again, myself, Chetna Desai. Uh, I head product management at Pagoda, and this is Jim. Jim Berry, he, hey. uh, he's the director of solutions. Um, we are here to talk about the integration of NEAR's open web services that's actually currently available for any of you to use. So just to warm up the crowd, um, how many of you, with the show of hands, how many of you can identify yourself as a founder, builder, or even a developer? With the show of hands. That's pretty cool, okay. Um, so you guys know. Uh, some of the needs, and especially I think David Morris has been very instrumental in showcasing the, the major theme, right? David, what is it? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so the major theme for NearCon, uh, which is? Step into an open web. Open web, and also? Okay, yeah, and, and in addition to that, founders. Founders have been the core element for everything that we're doing. So with that, um, this is what we're trying to cover today, um, just to get you all up to speed with what founders um, and their business and startup needs that we learned through talking to some of them, like you guys in the audience. Um, and Jim would walk us through the uh, actual near open web services that you can immediately use to solve some of the needs um, right here um, and what to look for in the future. Um, so with that, um, let's get started. So as, as I again mentioned, um, founders are at the heart of near ecosystem. Um, so we can't do anything without them. So that's the key here. And with the founders, I also want to reiterate that um, we have two main types of founders that we've identified. One is like developers who are cultivated through the active journey of being involved in NEAR, who ends up being the early stage startup founders. Um, and the second type is very obvious, the growth stage uh, founders, as well as late stage or the successful businesses that we already have in support. Um, all right, so as I said, um, there are some needs that we have collected by talking to a handful of them. And, and we have derived high-level category and themes. And, and I want to walk through some of the business-level needs and also some of the technology or the application-level needs that we identified amongst founders. So with that, um, these are some of the business-level needs that we identified. The first one here is the sustainable economics, which is to keep the lights on, right? So without this, the founders really can't do anything with their business or the products. So what do they need to do? They have to cut costs, um, effectively onboard users with the minimum cost, right, the CAC. Mm. And the second one here is once you onboard them, how do you retain them, right? That's, again, a large portion of their challenge as a founder. All right, as the second team emerges here is the sovereignty and flexibility. Um, what it means is, as a builder or a founder who's building a project or an application that needs to have all the freedom, right? If you think about uh, the use case of Apple Store, wherein there's a lot of gatekeeping, it's really hard, uh, the flexibility of you pushing through the application to the App Store 
or the distribution channel where the users can immediately use it without having another third agency make decision for your application. So that's, that's the large part of the second theme. Um, and the third theme on the business side here is the blockchain ecosystem. Um, what are some of the technology that they should be using as a founder, right? So what is the tech stack that they should be using? How flexible that is? How future-proofing that is, right? If you're on a single chain, you get tied to a single chain and you can't go beyond that chain. So this is one of the, 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 the most plaguing problem that I see among founder community, which is stuck up on a single chain and can't really switch easily. Um, again, are there any NF network of users that they can immediately onboard when they push their application out onto the network or the distribution channel? And other things which is part of the ecosystem building and, and the business building part. So with this, I want to quickly uh, move on to the, the technical aspect, which is the needs related to application journey, right? So if you have to build an application, um, what are some of the key things that they look for or the need for in their users? First one here is the discoverability. Um, their users should be easily able to navigate, search, and find application that, that inter interests them, right? So I think that's number one. Um, the second here is the identity, right? So um, this has been much talked about. I think we also announced IDOS, uh, which keyly um, integrate with the products that we are building, um, and which essentially mean is uh, more control over their identity and be more secure as well at the same time. And the third here is once you got the identity piece right, you can onboard users onto your application or platform, whatever you're building. The third thing here is to keep them engaged with new experiences, right? So that's also a key. You can, you can onboard all the users you want, but if they don't stay, if there's a hell lot of churn, then you have left with nothing, right? So I think this is also key in, in, in their life journey uh, of user onboarding. And the fourth here is we talk about at length about data, owning their data. Um, secure and be able to access their own data fast as well. So that's fourth. And fifth is something we are looking outwardly in terms of future, which is interoperability, wherein um, engaging users beyond a single chain, right? So that's where we talk about multi-chain as well. Uh, with these needs, you can see how near NIR's open web system or the web stack um, can actually provide you solutions or answers to them. So I'll hand it over to Jim. Hey, everybody. Good to see some uh, old friends, some new friends, some yet-to-be friends. Great to, great to see everybody here. So I want to go through these open web services. We've done a lot of work at Pagoda to, to have a, a pretty, pretty awesome suite of services and tools that you can use to accomplish each of those uh, goals that, that Chad had talked about. So we'll dive into each one, kind of briefly talk about stuff, and then we've got a short demo too, which should be fun. Um, so discoverability, obviously, really important for users to be able to find new experiences that they want to interact with. Uh, so we've got a lot of new technology. Near.org uh, is awesome as our boss gateway uh, to discover new applications to build new applications from what you see out there in the ecosystem. So, so definitely check that out. Uh, DApps uh, is an is a, uh, application within your org that you can discover applications, publish your application there. So uh, definitely check that stuff out. Um, uh, DApp partnerships is kind of interesting. Uh, and we'll get into identity in a little bit, but since we have um, fast auth and relayers, it's easier than ever to actually move from one experience to a new experience. So we can finally like couple these things together. So identity, super important. This used to be really, really hard in Web3, right? To, to create your identity for the first time, especially for a newbie that, that isn't a sophisticated user. Um, so fast auth is one of our primary services that we're continu continuing to iterate on uh, and make better. So really our idea was you should be able to create an identity in 15 seconds. Um, it should be as easy as Web2 and in a lot of ways even easier than, than Web2. So uh, we'll show that off here in a minute. Um, hopefully everybody's signed up for, for near.org and gone through that workflow, but, but we'll show it off. Uh, it's really cool being um, 
biometric enabled, pass key compatible, uh, great, great stuff there. We've got a really robust uh, fast off SDK that was uh, released a few weeks ago. Uh, so, so check that out. It's easier than ever to, to integrate with with fast off. Um, it's integrated with our relayer, so we're gonna show that. And then we've got multi-chain support coming. So if you uh, see David Miller Durant around here, pick his brain about what's coming. There's, there's some really cool uh, tech, tech coming down. Um, IDOS, uh, we partner with them uh, to uh, allow for verified credentials, um, uh, compliance, all that kind of stuff. So that's another service that you can bundle to, to create an identity that actually matches what your users need to, to be successful. Engagement, so engagement is super important. You create an identity, but the old model was you still had to figure out how to fund an account, how to interact with Web3. It was really cumbersome. Um, so we, we've released our uh, Meta Transactions Relayer uh, recently, which really makes that a lot easier. You can actually sponsor the initial interactions for your users without them having to create a wallet, add funds, go through all of that pain. Uh, so that's been really, really powerful. And actually, near.org, the initial experience is actually funded by our relayer. So we, we, we fund that right there. Um, we've got, it, it's really flexible too. So you can actually control which, which smart contracts you're actually sponsoring gas for, which methods within those smart contracts, what kind of user you actually want to act give that experience to. So we have both managed uh, and self-managed options. So we, we can either host a relayer um, for you, or you can run your own relayer. <laughs> So I'm going to jump into just a quick demo of this experience real quick. Let's see. I'm just going to create a new temporary email. I'm going to jump into, oops, sign out actually. I'm going to create a new user. So this is all using our, our fast off product right now. So I'm going to enable pass keys with biometrics. So no password during this experience, just uh, biometrics and pass keys. I'm going to go ahead and look for my email to confirm. Creating the account for me right now. Um, our relayer is sponsoring all the gas to create the account, so the user doesn't have to actually add funds at, at this point. I promised under 15 seconds, so we'll see if this comes in under under the gun. There you go. There we go. All right. So I'm going to agree. Save my data. So now we have a full near.org identity on, on, uh, um, on our gateway. What I'm going to do is jump into our relayer demo. So you can see we have a relayer set up. This is our uh, Pagoda demo relayer. So it's got a balance of almost 3,000 near. We're going to go ahead and just do a simple guest book interaction. So uh, just to show how this works. So I'm going to add the message. Uh, you know, right now, we, you have to pay gas for, for this transaction to go through, but this is actually going through our relayer. So this method, this smart contract, is approved. So we're going to go ahead. We've got to select our pass key. Again, biometrics to authorize. I'm going to confirm our transaction. So our message has been committed to the guest book. So right now we're going to jump in and see, whoops. So we're going to look at the, the transaction log here. So what you can see here, uh, we won't dive too, too deeply into this, but we, we actually are using the relayer to sponsor gas for those, uh, for those transactions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So pretty, pretty powerful stuff, really configurable. There's going to be a lot of additional innovation on top of this, including some multi-chain functionality uh, with our relayer. So both uh, fast off and relayer are going to be multi-chain compatible. Um, that's something that's going to be com coming up soon, uh, which is going to be pretty, pretty fun. All right. 
So data, we, we want to have data rich applications, obviously. So we've got a lot of new services that really make this a lot easier than it's been in the last year or two. Uh, Query API, if you haven't played with that, please check it out. Really, really powerful, uh, really easy way to build your own indexers. Uh, view indexers, build on what others have done. Uh, really powerful, there's components within your.org where you can actually use a, a nice wizard to create your first indexers. So where indexers used to be a really big pain point for developers, it's like easier than ever. So re really cool to go and play with that UI. So, so please do that, it uses the GraphQL uh, interface, so um, really easy for developers to get started. Uh, RPC, we continue to innovate on top of RPC. We're continuing to make it more decentralized, uh, faster, higher performing. So uh, look for those kind of innovations in the next uh, few months, that's going to get, get a, a, a lot better. Um, and then data availability. So uh, we, Ilya talked about this a little bit uh, yesterday, but using, um, we, we, have, we have a data availability product that's coming out. And actually, I'd encourage you to stick around after this. Farad's going to go deep dive into that, so I'll let him uh, give the details. But, but pretty, pretty cool service there to where um, not only can you interact with your own data, but you can interact with, with data from, from, from other chains as well. So I'll let you yeah. jump Thank you. Yeah. And, and as Jim mentioned, so we can actually manage it for you, the relayer services in FastAuth, or you can self-host them. Everything is open source. I think that's the beauty. So the social good that OpenWeb near is building is amazing. Uh, that's why I'm a fan and I'm, I'm here. So I, I would encourage everybody to actually take a look. And if you have any questions, reach out to us. Happy to answer any questions you guys have. Um, so looking in the future, as I mentioned, interoperability is something we're looking outward to. Uh, with, with all the announcement that happened yesterday with Ilya, so we are super thrilled to say that, as he mentioned, multi-chain fast all this coming. Like, we have created everything for the home chain, but we want to venture out and partner with other chains so that you have uh, data availability, fast auth and relayer compatible for other chains as well, so that you don't have to just do everything in the near chain, but also can do in other chains. Um, and and that, that goes with the theme of all the things that we mentioned. We can also offer near as an infrastructure tailgating on the, the same thing, pitch that I said, either you want us to manage, we can happy to manage that, or self-host yourself, uh, some of these services that we just um, said. Um, Again, uh, cannot read it enough, so here are the links that you can actually take a picture of and then go and, and provide us with feedback, ask questions, and reach out to us. Um, in, in addition to what Jim mentioned, I want to say that stick around, stay put. We have DA deep dive coming soon from Ferrat, and we also have a multi-chain concept that David wants to yeah. share uh, at the Block Zero um, Hacker HQ stage where he'll also walk you through multi-chain fast auth. I think so, that's at 3 o'clock, too. Yeah, so, it's 3 so p.m. If we're going to recommend other talks, stick around for Farat for sure and seeing David at, at 3 p.m. Exactly, be, yeah. We can great. all go together. Yeah. We're also going to um, keep, keep looking at the relayer stuff in near.org. We're going to release uh, three or four additional demos that will actually show you a lot of different permutations on, on relayer and how we use that internally. So you can go ahead and look at how that's, that's working. It'll give you a really good uh, head start. Awesome. Yeah. With that, thank you. Thank you, everybody.